Ray, good morning. How are you? Hello, my friend. Is there any outrage? Any uh, anybody upset about the Raiders? You know, filing these relocation plans. There is some, but it's not comparable to what Charger fans expressed when Dean Spanos picked up and left for San Diego or for Los Angeles. I think they're sort of resigned to it. I mean, this has been this talk has been three years building, not necessarily for Vegas, but for L.A. And then there was a brief flirtation with San Antonio. He's been looking. Uh, Mark Davis has been looking to get out for for three years at least, if not more. So I think there's sort of this weariness about it. Uh, I think there's a sense of inevitability. I think they had some hope when uh, Los Angeles, uh, the Los Angeles vote went against him a year ago. But then he turned around and he cobbled together a deal that is hard for the other owners to dislike. Yeah. And so I think for the most part, people are just going, well, this sucks. They're finally good and now they're leaving. But isn't that our lot in life? How does it not happen? It doesn't happen if we have underestimated uh, the owner's resistance to Mark Davis's charms. But I think <laughs> that has worn down as it's become increasingly clear that not only did he do a deal they didn't think he could get done in Vegas, but that the, the Oakland response has been so, you know, not to the league's liking. I mean, the, the league didn't want um, – the Fortress Group, which is the money people who were, were going to handle the construction of the stadium, to be involved. They wanted to control that themselves. And I think they're sort of looking at this now as though they really don't have an alternative but to move because we don't like the Oakland deal. So I, I think it's going to be hard for, for owners who maybe just don't think that Mark Davis should have Las Vegas to make a compelling argument to keep him out. What do Raider fans do? Uh, I would say somewhere between five and 8,000 will probably make 10 air, airplane flights a year. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I, it, look, if they don't do that, then Davis's whole idea about how Vegas can be viable takes a huge hit. Because he needs, he needs transplants from the Bay Area and he needs transplants from L.A. until they can build up their own sort of independent fan base. So I'm guessing, you know, somewhere in not ten thousand. I don't think it'll be that many, but I'd say somewhere between five, five and eight thousand would would make those trips because flights to Vegas are relatively cheap. More painful, the tuck rule game, car breaking his leg, or yesterday the relocation papers filed for Vegas. Um, of the three, the tuck rule is probably least painful because at least then they could wrap themselves around the notion that. The NFL somehow deliberately screwed them, and there's nothing that fuels your day quite like a conspiracy <laughs> theory. Whereas a car was bad luck, and I think that's the one that may bother them the most right now because they thought they had a Super Bowl quality team, or at least one that could contend for it. Did you think? So they I would had... say, in in order, the car one bothers them the most, followed by this, followed by the Tuck Roll. In, in some ways, I think they're happy about the Tuck Roll because it reinforces everything they've always believed about themselves and about the league. He's Ray Ratto, Comcast Sportsnet, Bay Area, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. I was uh, musing about the Golden State Warriors, and, and I've watched a lot of them this year, and I wondered, and I do wonder, do they have too many stars? Can you have too many stars on a team? Um. Well, they're, I mean, they're 36 and 6, yep. so they've overcome that part pretty well. <laughs> but it, it's weird to watch. You know, Curry is, is the one who has taken a dip here, and, and I, I get the feeling it he was leading the charge. Hey, come on here, KD. We'll take care of you. You blend in, have fun. It almost feels like he, he hasn't found his game where everybody else, I guess, is finding their game. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is with Curry, but he's come back down to earth. Why do you think that is? Um, I think in part because teams have uh, taken on what Cleveland did in the finals, which was really body up on him and put a guy on him no matter what is happening elsewhere on the court. So I think they've they've been more assiduous in trying to take him out of his game. Um, Beyond that, um, there, there aren't a lot of real differences, except that this team is being graded on margin of victory. If they only win by 12, the issue is, 
why are they coming apart? Yeah. You know, I mean, like I say, I mean, when, and when they do lose, they get blown out. I mean, they, they, they very rarely lose a close game. But for the most part, we're talking about parsing six losses and a number of games in which they didn't win by 20. So basically the bar has been raised for them as though, you know, Durant was going to come in and the adjustment would be seamless, which it hasn't been. I mean, you know, they weren't going to go to 135 points a game just because they included him on a team that wasn't going to have to make any other changes. I just think they're, they're at the back end of adjusting to Durant and he to them. But for the most part, I think Curry is because teams have figured out we can actually at least keep him in check where we couldn't figure out how to do it before. I think that's the difference in Curry's numbers. LeBron uh, refusing to acknowledge a rivalry with the Warriors means what? means that he's lying to us <laughs> um it's probably the only viable rivalry yeah. in the nba right now yeah oklahoma city was going to be that but oklahoma city is russell westbrook and uh the clippers were going to be that but they came and went um i think i think people will be viscerally disappointed if the finals aren't Cleveland and Golden State again mm-hmm. if somehow toronto got through or if san antonio beat the warriors I think a lot of people would be really bummed. So I think, you know, LeBron could say what he wants. I mean, he can, he can live in the alternate universe where there are no rivalries. But this is a rivalry, and you just saw one of the reasons why, which is Draymond Green, you know, sort of typed out a message to leave on his forehead. And I think you're going to see more of that. And if they play seven times in a row again, you, you're going to find out what a rivalry is. It's, it's going to be Celtics-Lakers level. Because there aren't any other alternatives. This is it. I'll, if there isn't, if this isn't a rivalry, there is none. I'll leave you with this: If I'm a Niner fan, give me a pep talk. In five years, they won't have moved. <laughs> uh, I can't. I, there, there is no evidence right now that will excite anybody. Because on the one hand, while the Kyle Shanahan deal is pretty much done, unless he gets cold feet. Uh, they don't have a general manager yet, and nobody's quite sure how that general, general manager is going to work. They've got to rebuild the entire roster. I mean, they are where the Raiders were four years ago, yeah. and it took, it took the Raiders four years to dig out. This is going to be a long, involved process, and the only thing that keeps 49er fans warm at night is their visceral hatred of Jed York. <laughs> if they didn't have that, the despair would be just – all-encompassing they have hatred and hatred can keep you warm when you run out of liquor have a good weekend ray thanks for joining us and you as well that's ray ratto comcast sportsnet bay area the dan patrick show weekday mornings on audience